Innovating Education Learning World in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation. The UN estimates that almost 400 million children around the world go to bed hungry. Many projects are working to secure food supplies and encourage children to go to school. We look at one of them in this week's Learning World. We also explore how education can promote healthy eating. We visit the Palestinian territories, Finland and Canada. The Israeli siege of Gaza resulted in food shortages and malnutrition for many young Palestinians. But one UN project is working hard to secure food supplies for schools, to encourage children to go to school and to provide mothers with good nutritional advice. Let's have a look. At this school in Gaza, around half the pupils come to school with an empty stomach. So the United Nations Relief and Works Agency for Palestine Refugees in the Near East distributes energy rations to 200,000 schoolchildren every day. This kind of food gives us energy and helps us work properly. Here, 13% of children suffer from severe malnutrition. And so many children are underfed that some sporting and cultural activities have been suspended because they're too tiring for the children. These meals are really important in the lives of these children because they are used to eating them at school. But it's also important to help families provide for their children. The Ard El Insan Institute for Nutrition was set up in 1984. Every day it sees around 50 families with problems like retarded growth, vitamin deficiencies and anemia. So they give nutritional education as well as food supplies. Of course, at the beginning, I fed my child by myself, but after that, I followed the recommendations and the advice of the nutritionist at the center. Now she's doing better. Besides also providing them with the articles, providing them with the approaches, providing them with the uh, written uh, pieces or documents, small, of course, and simple, so they can do the duty at home, they can provide the food at home. Malnutrition figures are now dropping, but the situation remains desperate. Some projects have run out of money and stopped distributing food, leaving thousands of children in Gaza with empty stomachs. One project in Finland is raising nutritional awareness by teaching young people to enjoy food with all their senses. Students are encouraged to grow and cook their own food as a way of learning about healthy eating. They hope this will reduce obesity in the whole community. <laughs> Sapere is a Latin word meaning taste, feel and be brave. Here at this school in Hali in Finland, they use the Sapere method to teach children about nutrition. The children are encouraged to play around with their food. They play games which involve tasting all kinds of vegetables. They help prepare meals in the mini kitchen and they even dress up as vegetables. Every day a group of two to four children get to bake something from the beginning until the end, finishing with cleaning the kitchen. It is fun to observe their reactions, like for instance, when they see what yeast does to pizza dough. The children are encouraged to use all five senses to learn about food and food preparation. 
they're also encouraged to express their opinions and listen to others. In the mini garden, children grow vegetables on their own. In the autumn, they also visit the surrounding woods to pick berries, which are then deep frozen and eaten throughout the following year. We have proof from many communities that the consumption of vegetables, fruits and berries among children has increased. The same goes for fish and some whole grain products. This will have a positive effect on their health and well-being. The aim in the long run is to help solve problems of obesity. Around 3,500 preschool teachers in Finland have been trained to use the Saperi method in their daycare centers. In many towns, it's a part of the preschool curriculum. in Canada, which is one of the world's biggest producers of waste, is promoting healthy choices in school lunch boxes as a way of contributing towards a sustainable environment. The teachers encourage students to choose their food carefully and to use ecological food wrappings. Let's find out more in Quebec. Here in Montreal, every morning Catherine prepares lunch boxes for her family. And she uses reusable containers for everything. On days when I eat at the office, which I do quite often, I prepare four lunch boxes, which means a minimum of 16 plastic containers to wash in the evening. Making healthy lunches means using fresh foods and dishes I make myself here at home, so that cuts down on rubbish. But not everyone is as conscious as Catherine. Canada is the biggest producer of waste amongst industrialized countries. It produces nearly 900 kilos per person per year, twice as much as Japan or Finland. And pre-prepared, over-packaged individual portions for lunch boxes contribute to the problem. This morning we're going to see if your lunch boxes contain what you need for your health and what the environment needs too. Because you know that the environment needs us. In little groups, the pupils examine the contents of their lunchboxes. The idea is to teach them what's good for their health and to reduce the amount of packaging used in lunchboxes. We have learned that we shouldn't have too many things to throw away in our lunchboxes so that we don't pollute too much and so that the planet won't get ill. It's easier to teach good habits at an early age than trying to change habits of people 30 or 50 years later, which is much more complicated. And it's more useful because sometimes children learn that the foods they love eating aren't necessarily the ones which are best for the environment. This approach was developed by Etablissement Vert Brundtland, a group based in Quebec which encourages schools to educate young people about sustainable development. We teach them to see that what they consume, especially in terms of food, has an impact on society and the environment. So we teach them from a very young age, using a concrete method, to become responsible eco-citizens. And after lunch, it's time for washing and sorting the rubbish from lunch. They're little gestures which add up. Well, that's it for now. I hope you've enjoyed this week's episode. Share your ideas with us on food and education. We will be back soon. Goodbye. Learning World, in association with WISE, an initiative of Qatar Foundation.